Given that you're disrespecting the power of the initial conditions, uh, let me ask you about, so how do you explain that cellular automata are able to produce such incredible complexity given just basic rules and basic initial conditions? I think that the, you've, you've, it, this falls into the Brouwer um, Hilbert trap. Mm -hmm. So how do you get a cellular automata to produce a, a, a complexity? You have a computer, you generate a display, and you map the change of that in time. Mm-hmm. You, there are some CAs that repeat like functions. Mm -hmm. Like it's fascinating to me that for pi, there is a there is a formula where you can go to the the millionth decimal place of pi mm -hmm. and read out the, de the the number without having to go there. Mm -hmm. But there are some numbers where you can't do that. You have to just crank through. Mm -hmm. There's um, whether it's Wolframian computational irreducibility or some other thing. Well, it doesn't matter. But these CAs, that complexity. Is that just complexity or a number that is basically you're mining that number in time? Mm -hmm. um, you know, is that just a display screen for that number, that function? Well, can't you say the same thing about the complexity on Earth then? No, because the complexity on Earth um, has a copy number and an assembly index associated with it. That CA is just a number running. You don't think it has a copy number? Wait, wait a minute. Well, it, it does in the human, where, where we're looking at humans producing different rules, but then it's nested on selection. So those CAs are produced by selection. Yeah. I mean, the CA is such a, a fascinating pseudo complexity generator. What I would love to do is understand, um, quantify the degree of surprise in a CA and run it long enough. Mm -hmm. But what that, I guess that means is we have to instantiate, we have to have a number of experiments where we're generating different rules and running them time spe steps. Mm -hmm. But Ah, oh, got it. CAs are mining novelty mm -hmm. in the future from the you know in the future by iteration, right? And you're like, oh, that's great, that's great. You didn't predict it. Some rules you can predict the, the what's going to happen. Other rules you can't. Mm -hmm. So for me, if anything, CAs are evidence that the the universe is too big to contain itself. Because otherwise, you'd know what the rules are going to do forever more. Right. I guess you were saying that the physicist saying that all you need is the initial conditions and the rules of physics. Uh, is somehow missing the bigger picture. And, Ab because, yeah. And, you know, if you look at CAs, all you need is the initial condition and, uh, and the rules, and then you, run the thing. You need three things. Mm -hmm. You need the initial conditions, you need the rules, and you need time, iteration to mine it out. Without the coordinate, right. you can't get it out. Sure. And that's that, that to use fundamental. And you can't predict it from the initial conditions. Yeah. If you could, then... Be and fine. that time is a resource. Like the foundation of uh, the history, the memory of each of the things that created it. it has to have that memory of all the things that led up to it. I think it's, a, yeah, you have to have the resource. Yeah. Because time is a fundamental uh, uh, resource. And, and um, yeah, I'm becoming, I think I had a major... Um, uh, epiphany about randomness, but I keep doing that every two days, and then it goes yeah. away again. It's random. You're you're a time fundamentalist. Uh, you should be as well. <laughs> if you believe in free will, yeah. the only conclusion is there is time is fundamental. Otherwise, you cannot have free will. It logically follows. Well, my my the foundation of my belief in free will is just uh, is is uh, observation driven. But that's I think and, if you use logic. It's like, logically, it seems like the universe is deterministic. Looking backwards in time, and that's yeah. correct. The universe is. 